Well, it's best to is not Welcome to the build video of my electric surfboard. So first, which parts did I use? Finally, I also designed this box and I let the company 3D print it due to its size. In total, this whole thing cost me close to 3000 euros. Now that the parts are sorted, let's build! In this clip I'm going to glue in the inserts. These inserts are used to bolt on the plexiglass lid. First I'm putting some epoxy in the holes where the inserts will be in, because the holes are bigger than necessary. With the inserts bolted in the plexiglass already, I'm putting all the inserts with the plexiglass on the box, so I know the inserts are 100% aligned with the holes of the plexiglass. With the motors and the impellers working and the box also finished, I put the impellers with the motors attached inside the box. The impellers are mounted inside the box in a similar way the plexiglass lid is attached. In the 3D printed box are holes in the bottom of the box where I put epoxy in. With the nuts and bolts already attached to the impeller, I put the impeller inside the box. The nuts will then be sunk into the holes with the epoxy. The nuts will basically be inserts for the impeller. On the back side of the 3D printed box, the bottom side is a little bit higher. The reason being that the box has an overlay with the bottom of the surfboard for extra bond when it will be glued in. I used a lot of epoxy to glue the box to the surfboard. For the bottom side, I used epoxy glass fiber again to make the 3D printed box flush with the surfboard and added strength. In total, I used three layers. Here I am pouring in the epoxy to fill it up completely. In total I did this 4 times with 24 hours drying in between to have it completely filled up so there won't be any air left between the surfboard and the 3D printed box. In total gluing the box into the surfboard took around 2 weeks.
right, I missed some parts about the surfboard. To start off with this box, uh, I glued on this epox with epoxy. It's not a very nice solution, but it works for now. And as long as it works, I keep it this way. Uh, in this box are four XT60 connectors for the four rows of batteries. Uh, each row of battery is 18S4P, so four is then 16P. This is the receiver, it's powered separately with a four cell battery. And that's the box. Uh, then we go over here. I uh, had quite some issues with the couplers. The um, impellers came with these couplers, but these uh, gave too much vibrations, so I didn't use this one. Then I ended up using these, but after 10 seconds of using, this one ended up pretty bad, and normally it looks like this. So yeah, I figured these are too weak. So now I went to solid metal couplers, these ones, and these work really smooth. Then I have a heat issue with these motors. Uh, I can only run it for three minutes actually, and then I need to stop to cool it down. Uh, I want to use ice, check if that works. Uh, it's a kind of janky solution, but yeah, I need to figure something out for the heat. Even though it's water cooled, there's still a lot of heat coming out of it. Also, this box has still some water leakage. I put an extra rubber seal around it. And also the um, nuts have rubber uh, yeah, things around them. But still a little bit of water get in. It's not that big of an issue. Everything in here is actually waterproof. So I don't mind that much. I also added this meter here. Um, it measures the temperature and the voltage, so you can see how full the batteries still are. So yeah, that's it actually, and thank you for watching.